Hi, this is Jason from DTB Traders. Thank you so much for taking the time out to watch this video. This video is going to specifically cover some of the recent updates to the DTB system. So unfortunately it's been a few weeks, or quite a few weeks actually, since I've released a video outlining all the updates. So very important for you guys to have a look through this, especially those you haven't updated in a while. You'll notice some really, really powerful updates that we have put in here to make um, your trading a bit more fun, simple and consistent. So let's get through that. The risk disclosures, so review that please. Um, there'll be a link to it in the video as well. So let's jump straight into it. Okay, so the first thing to do is if you are on a previous assembly, go into your tools, well first close up all your workspaces, go to, into your tools, and um, go remove ninja script assembly so what this will do is this will tell you which which assembly you are on so i've just launched this one a few minutes ago the 24th of november so if you want a previous assembly just remove your old one and this is where you can do it and then once you've removed your assembly just shut down ninja trader reopen it and then go into tools import ninja script add-on and this is where you can down or this is where you'll find um, your file that you downloaded from your OneDrive folder. So the OneDrive folder has got this update in it. So these are the recent updates that I've done. As you can see, there's been a few. So the latest one's the 24th. So download that um, folder or download this file from the OneDrive folder and import this one so this is the one to use once that has been done you know and especially if you if you haven't been updating for a while just go into your third party licensing go to DTB put DTB traders in there and then go and put your first name in there so this first name that you're going to use is not a nickname or anything like that just use what what you registered with on the website so whatever first name you used as your registration on the website put that in there because that is what I'm going to be using to license your software then once you've done that click on submit and if you've done your licensing correctly in your in your um, in your setup or you know in your um, members area then it will be your tools will work basically immediately so I'm going to jump straight into the a chart. So let's just jump into a chart. I'll just bring up an NQ. Let's load up a DTB bars 2020 with five days. That'll be fine. So this is just going to launch a a window with the tick bars. So once you've opened up a bars like this, just go into your data series. And here you can you can actually use break at end of day on the DTB bars now. So bear that in mind. So it is recommended now to use the break at end of day. And that's because a recent update to the DTB bars has allowed for that to be more consistent with results. So pop in that break at end of day for the DTB bars, actually all the bars, they'll be fine on that. You'll notice that on the previous videos for the analytical strategies, I recommended the analytical bars. But what we've done now is we've done significant updates to the DTB bars. And this is the one that you should be using on your automated strategies. So please keep that in mind. Okay, so let's jump straight into, I'll look at the, we'll look at the indicators very, very briefly. So you're going to notice that there's two versions of the momentum bars. So this is your A and B settings. So the first one is your standard A and B settings like this, where you had a setting A and a setting B for an entire period. The momentum bars continuous now has slots in it. So it's what this basically does is it splits up the trading day. So you're able to choose different values for 10 slots and then you're able to choose those specific times of the day that you want those slots to be in. But we'll go through that very briefly. We'll go through that in more detail 
on the um, video uh, on the section where we cover the strategy analyzer okay so that's the momentum bars and the same thing has happened here with the SI indicator so the SI indicator had the setting A and the setting B but now the SI indicator continuous this one has also got the slots built in to be able to trade the day in a much more dissected manner we have another little version of the shadow trading indicator 2 so it's called the shadow trading zero line um, it just shows the bars in a in a slightly different way to the shadow trading so a good little a good indicator to work with I've got two options I've got two versions of the ultimate bands the ultimate bands OG <laughs> original gangster that one there you can basically use in a strategy builder so if you've got tools that you are working with there are plots inside this very specific indicator that you can select in your strategy builder so you won't find those plots on the other one that I've coded it's just the original one has got those plots okay so we'll just jump away from that now we'll look at the strategies okay so the first thing to basically do is bring up a new strategy analyzer okay so we'll bring up that strategy analyzer and this is what you basically use to to go through your settings to find which settings are have worked very well for the for the strategy so we have we have we'll do, we'll do some optimizations right now just to make it to show you how they work so there's the analytical strategy one so you, a lot of you guys have worked with this one and this one here what you can do is you can do a setting a and a setting b so let's just go as an example from 1 to 10 and 1 to 10 uh, this is a this is a very it's a small range of numbers so remember you can go anywhere between 1 and 100 and 1 and and basically 60 50 I would go 58 on on that as a maximum and you've also got a tick delay so what this is going to do is we'll go let's just go north to 20 in increments of 20 so we are using we'll use a 2020 bar in this example so we're trading the repaints we'll just go through the general settings I'm going to select the NQ on this so I'm mainly doing this optimization just to show you what the difference is between the two versions of this strategy so DTB bars and we're going to choose 20 and 20 and like I said I'm just doing a very very small area of time so let's go from Monday up until today which is tomorrow let's go 21 to 23 we'll use the instrument settings and we're going to include commission and we're going to do max net profit so this is just a very quick little quick little thing so if you want to copy this on your side you're welcome to do that I'm also going to select to not use a trailing stop so I'm going to disable the trailing stop on this one so this is just pure continuous trading using the analytical strategy one okay so like there's an example so what this is done is it's saying that since the beginning of the trading week these are the trades that it would have entered so if we go into um, analysis and we go half hour of day <clears throat> and we'll go to the entry time so basically with these settings that it's popped up so it's popped up as a three and a three with a zero tick delay so these are the settings that would have worked over the last two trading days if we go to the chart we'll see that you know those are the settings now you'll notice that it's only one group of settings you, we've only optimized you know one setting A and one setting B and one tick delay now this obviously is a very small sample of data so what it's showing is the best settings that have worked for that entire period now the updated strategy so if I go and duplicate this in a new tab and I'll just click on that 
and then click on uh, that's fine it can run so the next one to look at which is the analytical strategy one continuous so this one over here what this one does and it might not be as clear to see on on such a small sample of data but we'll go through it anyway so we'll do the same thing as we did in the previous strategy so we're going to go optimize the a and b values and what you'll notice now so it's, it's basically kept all the bar size so if you notice the bar size the dates and everything is exactly the same okay I do have profit factor I do want to maximize on max net profit so I'm just going to go run this one again oh, it is on max net profit so I don't know what why ninja trader did that okay so we're optimizing on max net profit setting a and b now with the second one that we that we're looking at the continuous one what we're doing over here is we are choosing the slots so we are enabling all the slots so this is to choose what parts of the day you want to analyze so because we are we've got all the slots as true what this is going to do is it's going to find us the best values for every period in the day so starting at 615 to 850 and the next slots gonna start from 9 to 1150 so you can basically choose which slots over here you want to use simply by going up here and selecting true or false based on you know the, the, the slots that you want to use so I'll just I'll mark them all as true so what will happen is it's gonna run will run optimization so the first thing you will do is go and run optimization on your first lot of settings now unfortunately we can't go and optimize them all at once because ninja trader cannot handle that much optimization and that that many variables so we have to go into each slot or each slot one at a time and you'll notice there's a setting a a setting b and a tick delay for slot one so I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to go 1 to 10. And I'm going to go 1 to 10. And I'm going to go 0 to 20 in increments of 10. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run that optimization. So what this is going to do is it's going to run the optimization for slot 1 which is that very specific time of 6.15 a.m. or 6.15 p.m. to 8.50 p.m. So if we go now to the analysis and we go half hour a day, it's basically done this section over here. So what we have to do now that with these results, so we take these results that we've got here, and we can put there we're going to put two and two to fit the minimum and maximum of the slot 1a and then we're going to go to slot b and we're going to put the values in there too so we're going to put six and six and it shows a zero so whatever is in brackets those are the values that we put in the analyzer so what we what we have to do over here so that Ninja Trader does not go and re-optimize those values is you have to make them even like it has been done. So now once that has been done, we move on to slot two. So and we do the same thing over there. So we go one to ten and we go yeah, I'll just do one to ten again over here and zero to 20 in increments of 20 actually you know what we do have to go in increments of the bar size so we selected a 20 bar size okay so we've got a bar size of 20 so when we're doing the optimizations we have to make sure that we've got this in increments of 20 so I'm just going to fix up that first one not that it's selected it on that one but now we're going to run slot number two so you'll notice that slot number two is going to run and it's going to give us the best values for that specific time so over here it's come up with two and 
a two, so we'll just do that. Two, two, and ten, ten, and it's come up, up with a twenty tick delay. So if you put so because there's twenty in there, you've got to put in twenty. So what that does is it has taken care of slot two. Now you don't have to go and do them all in order. You can go through your analysis over here and say, well, I want to optimize the values that are showing the weakest. So I'm going to go and optimize now from 9.30 a.m. So you go down to the bottom and you say, you say, okay, which slot is starting at 9, 9.30? Okay, so slot seven. Slot seven is between nine and 9.55. So you can go down to slot seven, increase the variables over there, and put in your one, two, again, your values can go up to, you know, one to, one to 20 on setting A is, is a good value, and one to 40 on setting B is a good value to work with. And then the tick delay, just make sure that it's in increments of the bar size. So I'm just gonna do a small value over here just to run that and I'm only going to do these few little slots just to show you guys how to work because it's ba basically repeating that step one after the next after the next and what so what we're trying to do here I know it doesn't look the greatest but what we're doing is we are actually optimizing the entire day over an extended period of time so because we're using a very small sample data it's not going to be as clearly evident in what we're doing over here but what what this is basically going to do is it's going to give us the absolute best a and b settings for the specific times of the day and what you'll notice here too is there is a little button here that says exit open position at the end of each time slot. So what will happen is it'll give you the best settings for a specific time slot. When that time slot starts, it's going to start calculating those A and B settings and it will enter positions. And what will happen is when that time slot is complete, whichever time you have selected, it's going to exit that open position and it's going to wait for the next time slot and it's going to start calculating from that time slot and it's gonna enter positions based on the settings, it's gonna exit at the end of that time slot. So every single time slot, it's going to open and close positions and the last position, whichever is open, will exit at the end of that time slot. Now, these time slots in here are specifically relating to the times that you're putting in here. Now, notice how we haven't used the trading hours. So what you can also do is you can select your specific times of the day to trade over here so you can say I want to use time slot trading I want to use time slot 1 and I want to trade from 12 a.m. to 5 p.m. or I want to trade from 12 a.m. to 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 4 p.m. so that that those are your only times that you want to trade or you want to go from from 9 a.m. so what, whatever times that you actually want to trade you can actually put that in there and what will happen is your optimizations will all calculate will calculate the times of the day sp specifically between those trading hours and you can have two different variations here too so you can have two trading hour time slots separated so the one could be from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. The other one could be from 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. So you can have like both of those activated. So I'm going to just activate them both on here. So what will happen in this sense is the strategy will only optimize and get you the results between those specific hours. So that is what it's going to do. So it's going to give you the values on here. So you'll notice all of these times over here if you look at the analysis right on the on the chart you'll notice that the results that it's giving is only going to be between the specific hours that you have selected to trade so a little bit technical initially but once you get into it and you run your optimizations you are able to go to a much larger period of time so if I go and load up a template oh my goodness I've gone and um, 
I've actually gone and taken that away so I've just got to bring some templates in there just give me one second so this will this will help if I can bring in some of these templates okay so strategy let me just bring them up on my on my other screen okay I gotta bring them from another computer but th this is what we do with this one we we it's, it's quite an advanced strategy because this is the first strategy of its kind to basically segment the trading day so you're able to optimize a very large sample of data and find the absolute best settings for for different times of the day and that is even just using instrument hours you can even go further dissect it by choosing very specific days of the week so as an example you can go the New York time frame from you know from different hours so you can even say specific days of the week so let's go from Thursday 12 a.m. to Thursday 4 p.m. and you can run optimizations on that um, that's not going to bring up anything now because we haven't got a Thursday but if you can go if you go back further on and you run that do and then you can choose your specific slots between those specific hours and what that will do is that will give you settings that will work during that time so I didn't even run a proper optimization over there even select the hour, the times but what you can do is you can have all different trading hours templates you can use them and you just trying to get yourself the best opportunity or the best possibility to have optimized values okay so that is the analytical strategy one continuous you can do the exact same thing with the analytical strategy two continuous so this one over here also has the time slots now you may be wondering why are there two different analytical strategies well they do deal with price slightly different they do they do deal with um, the analytical strategy two actually has an arrow count in it which is basically optimizing even further so a, a brilliant strategy to work with the same principle applies over there with the time slots and the times okay and now our very most recent strategy that I just completed working on today is our shadow trading strategy so the shadow trading strategy is working off our shadow trading indicator so if you if I bring up the chart over here and I go to the indicator and I load up the shadow trading indicator which is this one over here what this is going to do is you able to run this through the optimizer and you able to see which arrows are the best ones to act on so the the arrows the the arrow count <coughs> as well as the momentum line so that is what you have to work with on with this strategy so very powerful so let's just run an optimization on you now this one only has the the one lot of settings to use well actually it's actually got a um, a few over here so there's the arrow count okay so you you selecting which arrow do you want to enter positions on so you can go from 1 to 14 over here so 14 arrows in a row it's going to optimize all of those values in increments of one you can also select to only use an arrow count so let's just try that one let's just run that one first so I'm only selecting which arrow should trades be entered on and it's only going to work on the arrow so it's not going to work off the momentum line it's only going to count the arrows and enter trades based on those arrows so let's just go from let's just go from the the instrument settings let's just go from the 31st of October up until today now remember too we are including the commission and we are including slippage so whenever you see a strategy analyzer result and you've got no commission and you've got no slippage completely switch off from that because it's very de it's very deceiving to see you know that being seen so as an example if you look at this trading chart so I'm going to scroll right in you're going to notice that the trades being entered on the specific trading chart 
are taking in con into consideration what the price will be or is at that very specific time. So there's the entry. Now, if you have zero slippage on your trading chart, every single trade will show at the beginning of that candle. So this one over here is going to show you the three, which is the difference between the buy, the bid, and the ask. So that you you have to have a slippage. So that 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 takes in consideration what the difference is between the buy and the ask. You cannot you cannot close a position and open another position at exactly the same price. And unfortunately, the strategy analyzer, I don't know why they call this slippage. It should be called spread. It should actually be called spread, not slippage. Um, but what this should, what this basically does is it's it's actually plotting the positions of where the trades would actually happen if you were trading this in live. Okay, so like there's an example. So there it's telling us that eight arrows. On the eighth arrow, it's entering a position, and that that would have been the result for that period. Okay. Now you can take this now, you can go template save and you can go eight arrows. So this is I'm gonna just put there eight arrows. Okay, and now I'm gonna go load up a chart. So let's take this chart over here. Okay, so we go to the indicator and I'm gonna remove this version of the shadow trading because we're gonna load it into the in with the strategy. I'm going to go load up that specific date range, so the 2020 bars, and we chose a custom range to match the analyzer. So we use the 31st of um, October up until today. Okay. And I'm just going to go back in there to make sure that it's stuck, it stays there. Okay, perfect. Now I'm going to load up the strategy which is the shadow trading strategy so exactly what we look what we worked on right now and the good thing now is you don't have to go put those values in manually you can just go to your template and you can go load and there's that eight arrows we just created it's going to pre-populate your settings so if you've chosen specific trading hours a specific daily target and stop your target ticks all of that it will automatically import that into this so if i go click on okay it's going to show you those trades now you're able to go and compare this to your strategy analyzer so for the first thing you can look at is these values over here so the, the trading chart's going to tell you the drawdown the accuracy and the net profit and that's going to show you on your analyzer so that's how you know that you got the right settings loaded on your chart now the strategy analyzer does run a lot faster if you have unticked a box in it that says add chart indicator to strategy so in the analyzer there's a box there that says add chart indicator to strategy if that's unticked which it has which it is the optimizer runs a lot quicker but before you go and activate the strategy on the chart so we've loaded the strategy we've gone and loaded the template we've selected the template that over there Okay, now before you go and click on enable and choose your account, just go and tick this box. And by ticking this box, it's actually gonna put the indicator on the chart. So now you can actually go and view where those specific trades had entered. So this is loading the strategy with the indicator attached. So as an example, um, the strategy is going to automatically activate when you enable it. It's it's on wait until flats synchronize account, so it's only going to act on the next signal that comes up. So, as an example, um, you're going to see here that the last trade exited over there, and that would have been on the eighth arrow. So, if you scroll and you look at this chart, you're going to notice that it is acting specifically on that arrow in there and it's, it's even in the start button it's got eight over there so if you scroll and you look at the exact entries you're going to notice that those are 
the specific times where the strategy has entered their positions. So, so there's your eight arrows. So even in the data box, it tells you on arrow eight. So there was arrow eight. It entered a position on the next on the next candle. So it's going to be entering positions based on that. So that's how you're able to compare that data. So those are, those are those settings. So that's one of the settings in there. So what we've done is we've only used the arrow count. So now if you go and disable the arrow count, what this does is it doesn't it doesn't only act on the arrows. It's going to act on the arrows as well as the momentum line. So the momentum line has got a value in it. So like at the moment, the momentum line is on 3.0. As the price moves, you'll notice that the momentum line is in different values. So now it's going to act on the momentum line value as well as the arrow value. So it's kind of a just um, optimizing it a bit further. So I'm going to go and select the moment, momentum line level. Now the momentum line level, you can do it in increments of 0.1. But I'm just going to go from 1 to 10, which will be fine to do. And I'm going to go and optimize that. So you'll see that the values at the bottom have slightly increased to 140. So it's optimizing arrow 1 to 14, but it's also optimizing the it's also optimizing the number of the momentum line. So you can notice now that that value has greatly increased. So now we all of a sudden have much higher values so it's acting on the second arrow but the mem at and the momentum line at level three so i'm gonna go template and save and i'm gonna call this um i'm gonna just call this this the two arrow okay so i'm just gonna call this you, you can be a bit more descriptive with your so two arrows um plus momentum okay and I'm gonna just call it that and I'll go back to the same chart so if I go to the strategy over here so you'll notice the last result show ten thousand dollars with um, a two thousand seven hundred drawdown so I'm gonna go and disable this one and I'm gonna go template load and I'm gonna call this one two arrows plus momentum, load that one. And again, I'm gonna go and load the indicator on the strategy, click on apply, and okay. So give that a moment to load. Hang on, so did I, did I click enable? I did something that happened there. So I've loaded up the template, okay. Now I've gotta click on enable, apply, Okay, so now it is showing the values in there. So this is showing a 2,800 drawdown with an 18,000 um, thing. So what you can do again is you can go to your strategy analyzer and you can make sure that the values are actually matching in there. So if I just go and move this slightly. Okay, I just had a little bit of a, a system issue there. Okay, so just coming back to this, the analyzer. So you can go and look at your values on your analyzer, and the reason why the the strategy says twenty thousand and thirty five is because it's actually taking into consideration the last trade that the strategy would be in, and where it's exited. So it will, the strategy analyzer will automatically close any position in that it, that would have been open and it's going to give you that value over there. So that's why the chart that we saw earlier actually was matching this value on here and that is exactly where the trades were would have been active on. So unfortunately my chart has, has frozen a little bit on top. So that and this is only one entry per direction. So if you go and do this exact same thing over here and you go 10 entries per direction as an example what will happen is it's going to give you the results. It'll still look at the arrow count. It's going to see how many arrows would have been um, valid. So this is like eight arrows with the momentum line at six. 
So what this is going to do here is it's going to enter positions based on the um, the the arrow count and the um, momentum line value. So if you go to the if you go to the analysis or the summary, first of all let's go to the summary. Um, so this here, what this does is it shows you. Um, the history or what what the strategy would have accomplished. So again, we we got commissions built in. So there were two hundred and five trades with a sixty five percent profitability, and the slippage is three hundred and seven. So that's all been included in those values. So looking at the analysis, and there's your entry time. So you'll notice there's a huge amount of trades specifically at the nine nine thirty open. And if you go just to the um, the daily results, those are the specific trading days from the from that pair of the month, from the beginning of the of of the month, the first of November up until now. And um, there's a cumulative. So what you can basically do over here is you can say, well, I want to know between. A certain period of time and today what these results are giving me and then you can also go to your to your trading chart and you can specifically see what has happened so you might notice that um, I noticed this yesterday well, not, not with these settings but there were some settings yesterday that took a bit of a hit on the shadow trading indicator because the the previous market conditions were a little bit different to what we experienced yesterday Okay, so that's just running the optimization. So if I go now and just going back to the chart, um, you, you'll notice that the values are very high. So what this basically does is it's going to enter on this on the eighth arrow. So it's only going to enter on the eighth arrow. Now um, you can't see the arrows specifically on this chart, but I will just scroll in anyway to one of these. So what would have happened over here? is they would have painted an eight arrow so a number eight arrow would have been on this on this bar over here uh, where are we uh, please don't freeze on me again so a number eight arrow would have would have plotted over here and immediately when that arrow plots it's going to start it's going to start entering position so it's going to enter on every bar while there is an eight arrow as soon as there is another arrow it will stop entering position so after the ninth arrow has been confirmed it won't enter any more positions so it's only going to enter on that arrow count and the arrows after it up to the maximum entries per direction that you actually have going so that is what this one is going to do so i had a little issue again <laughs> Um, I, I played around with the vendor licensing thing and it kicked me out of my own system so um, all good now so basically what's going to happen it's going to enter on the eighth arrow and it's going to keep entering positions up until the ninth arrow and it's going to stop after that so this is like this is 10 entries per direction so whatever value you put in there it's going to enter so this is good to play with two on like the MNQ so if you're doing 10 entries per direction, that is basically one mini contract. So I'm going to run this. You'll see now I'm running it on the MNQ for the first time. Um, so the first time it runs, it takes a little bit longer to actually run. So there's the MNQ and it's coming up with those values. Okay, so with the MNQ, the bars move slightly differently. The price action, you know, is a little bit different than the NQ so like those are the results for the MNQ over the same period of time so if we go and look at the analysis of that also you'll be able to see the um, you know the commission that's been built in so it started off a bit low and then actually shot up um, if we go to the um, what are we looking at I want to go to the summary so that's going to show you the commission that's built in as well as the slippage so you'll see the slippage actually built in there too 
so this is what we can um, we can look at now again we've I've got 10 entries per direction so that was the second setting now if you notice too now we've got a different way of dealing with the momentum line level so you'll see that we've got the arrow count which is 1 to 14 we've got the momentum line level but there's a separate way of using the to use a leading momentum so this is just where the momentum line has a little bit more control over what's happening with the with the orders so if you go and select this as true now you can actually go select optimize so I'm just gonna select as true and what's what it's gonna do is gonna run the same settings through the analyzer it's gonna re-optimize the bar count and over there it actually did so over there that didn't actually make a huge difference that actually made the results a little bit worse off so by using that specific setting on this bar and on this bar type those specific values were better previously so if you go and use optimize on here and you ran the same results through there it's going to increase the amount of iterations but on this very specific bar size that we used having that other that extra filter for the leading momentum didn't actually increase the results but that's not always the case so like there is there's an example so if you hover over there it's going to say two arrow count three momentum line and it's using false as the arrow and false as the leading momentum so you can basically run this optimization and you'll see all of these will be false because the false the false there's a the true so there's the first one where it says that the leading momentum gave this result so that's the first one there but now if you go and select so you can go and select minute bars as an example so you can go minute bars and you want to go and optimize the minute bars so let's go to optimize the data series let's go and select between let's go between 5 minute and 15 minutes in increments of 1 and I'm going to select leading momentum I'm going to click on optimize I just want to see how many up to this is going to give so this is giving 3080 iterations it should still not take very long so you'll find that it actually cycles through the results pretty pretty quickly and, we, and we're also only using a small amount of data from the first of basically the, the first of November to today so it is a reasonably small sample of data that we're working with so we'll see what this one comes up with and we're still using the MNQ so we're still on the MNQ <clears throat> and we're optimizing that value okay so this is giving us the this is telling us that on a five minute bar okay with a one arrow count and let's see so this one is saying false so still the leading momentum is false actually on all of these they are false okay so let's look at this and you can look at the chart so this is a five minute chart and now the same thing is happening there it's entering positions up to the max entries per directions and again you will notice that the slippage is built into the orders so you're going to notice that where these entries are taking place that is where the entries are so notice how this is a five minute bar notice how this order entered over there you see it entered on that spot over there it didn't enter at the beginning of the bar so what happened over here is it calculated okay the bar closed and the first and the entry over there so you'll check over here uh, a little bit off so that was four ticks so it's basically three ticks where the difference between the bid and the ask and this one over here you notice how I did a sell order and notice how that sell order is is not at the top of the bar so because it's a bid and an ask remember that let's just go back there remember that when you are entering an order on the beginning of the bar if you're gonna buy on this bar your order is going to be over here will be three ticks up if you are gonna sell 
at the open of that bar, your order is going to be three ticks below. So that's this is what happens when you are when you are buying and selling, is you not you're not actually entering the trade on the on the exact price of the bar. You are entering it three ticks lower. So that is why this um, that that's why it is so vitally important to put in your slippage into it because that's the only way you're going to get a true reflection of where those entries are going to be. So you'll notice all of these trades um, are where they should be. That's a sell, so that entered, that looks like it's on the bar, but that's because it basically entered and it's at the bottom of that bar instead of up higher. There's a sell over there. So you'll notice that it's it's pretty good. Ninja Trader is pretty good at, at this. It's not always gonna get it spot on, um, but you're gonna notice that you including that slippage is gonna really be in your favor because it's actually gonna paint correctly of where that price is. So that was on like the 515. Now if we go to like the DTB bar, so let's go to a um, Let's go to a a twenty to a one hundred in increments of ten with a baseline with a twenty. So that's basically looking at a twenty. So that's going to optimize that. So that is a DTB bars. It's going to optimize the twenty twenty. It's going to optimize thirty twenty, forty twenty, fifty twenty, all the way up until a hundred. And 20 so when you're looking at a chart if I bring up a new chart um, I'll quickly bring up a new chart while that's busy calculating and we'll bring up an MNQ okay so this is what, what I was looking at so it's gonna optimize it's gonna optimize the 2020 from the um, from that date, okay, it's going to optimize 2020, and then it's going to optimize 3020, then it's going to optimize 4020, and all the way up till 120. So that's what this optimizer is doing right here, in increments of 10. So that's how you can optimize. So what this is doing is cycling through all these different values to find what is the best setting for this to work. And then it's optimizing the leading momentum too. So we'll see if that pops up. Okay, so this is saying that a 40, so look at the bar size, a 40, 20. So if I go to a 40 and a 20 like this, this is basically what the bar size looks like that the strategy analyzer has given us the best settings for. So we'll get this to load. Okay, well while that's loading, I'll go save the template. So over here, I'm gonna go template, and I'm gonna go save, and I'm gonna call this 4020 MNQ. Okay, so I'm gonna save that. All right. Okay, so there we go. So there's our 4020 um, uh, 4020 over there that's how the bars look now another thing too is these I was saying earlier that these bars are extremely accurate so you'll notice that where the bar closes so look at the bar close 16230 is exactly where the next bar opens so there's no false ticks or any fake ticks on these bars every single point on these bars is where price has been there's no fake ticks whatsoever and if you zoom in you can actually see this even clearer there's no there's just no so that's why these bars specifically are extremely 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 accurate with with regards to automated strategies and and tick bars because a lot of tick bars show false values okay so let's go and load up that strategy so shadow trading, we'll go load up the shadow trading strategy. We'll go template, load that specific template, which we call the 4020. Okay, it's gonna pre-populate all the settings. All we have to do now is go and click this box to say add chart indicator to strategy. 
and go and enable apply and OK and then what will happen is the strategy will automatically um, activate itself so you'll see the lines the, the box is is is, um, is gray as soon as that bar closes it will actually start looking for positions so let's go and look at our, our chart so look at our strategy analyzer so there's our chart and there's our strategy analyzer so what this is doing is I'll just try and minimize this slightly on the screen so again what's happened here is the the trades on the specific chart are exiting over there because that's where the strategy analyzer closes it off so right now the strategy historically would have been in a short position at a profit so if we scroll back so if I go and activate this global crosshair on the analyzer and I activate the global cross on the trading chart we're actually going to see those specific trades so we're going to go back go back go back this point over here see there's all the sell orders on the top chart you see sell 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 and on the bottom chart it shows them where they are so this is basically plotting the values of those previous entries so if we go back Okay, so I'm just trying to check. Let's just scroll a bit further back. So there are, you see the top chart and the bottom chart are lining up. I'm just trying to get the exact, um, so hard to do this on one screen. Just trying to go back to where those trades actually started. Oh goodness, that's so tricky. Um, okay, so there the strategy has actually enabled right now. I'm clicking page up and page down but it's not seemed to be reacting very oh there we go a little bit of a lag so it's just showing where those entries are so this one here is acting off the sixth arrow so if you notice now um, you'll notice that it says arrows down six you see how it says arrows down six on the data series or on the um, on the data box and the previous arrows will show five four three two one so that's what it's basically doing is it's acting on that sixth arrow and it's entering on every bar after that arrow up until the max entries per direction but then it's not going to enter after the seventh bar onwards and anyway it, there was 10 bars so it entered the 10 entries so that is what this strategy is going to be doing with the shadow trading indicator so it's going to be entering positions based specifically on the optimizations and the cool thing too is while the strategy is running you can actually have your strategy analyzer on your chart and you can run your optimization on your analyzer and you will notice that the trades will match exactly on your trading chart so that's a good way just to make sure that you got no data corruption or anything like that um, so we'll just get this to run again I know it's not going to bring up any extra results because there's been no trades exit but what it's going to do though is going to show us up until current price So just looking at this, um, so while that is running, I just want to bring up something 
on here. Let me just see if I can find something here. Yeah, so you notice how the bars on the on the on the chart, the trading chart, I know the colors are not matching because I haven't got the indicator loaded in the analyzer, but the actual bars themselves are perfectly lined up. So notice how there is an exact synergy between the bar formation on the analyzer and on the trading chart. So that's how you're getting absolute accuracy with the bar type and the analyzer working together. Now I just wanted to bring up, so we've got a Google Drive folder and the Google Drive folder contains all the information for the indicators and the tools. Um, it does need a bit of an update but I created one specifically for the shadow trading indicator, or the strategy. So here's a shadow trading strategy and I took some screenshots of optimizations. So here is um, this was the this was the the NQ with the leading momentum actually being um, very successful on this bar top. This was a 1010 bar from the same dates we were looking at, and they and that specific one we did an optimization from the first to the 19th, and that one came up. This was actually a volume, so we've, we've, we've done volume and tick. So this was a 10-10 bar, a bit of a mix up over here. You've got to click on them individually. But like this specific one here showed 273 trades entered by the automated strategy and only had, if I'm not mistaken, had one losing position out of those um, 273 trades. I'm not sure if if this is going to show on here. Let me just cycle between them. There, so that basically showed what these specific settings did for that period of time on the analytical bar. So there's a few of those screenshots. I've also got volume, so there's also a volume so I did specifically volume so that you can do optimization on volume charts as well. So let's have a look at that for interest sake. So you can go and do the same optimization over here and you can say I want to use the volume bars. So you can go to volume and I want to go between 300 and 500 in increments of 20 for the same data period that we're looking at and then run that. So again, it'll take a few minutes to actually just um, get going, but not a long time. You'll notice that the optimizations do run pretty quick. They run a lot quicker if you don't tick this box. So as soon as you don't tick this box, um, the only disadvantage of not having that box ticked is that you can't really view in the analyzer itself all the arrows and the momentum line but you know, but just by loading the strategy on a trading chart, you'll see them anyway. So that's not vitally important that that is done. Okay, so we'll just wait for this in a, for a moment. <clears throat> so, so it does show, you'll see this time drop very, very fast. Actually, it might take a bit longer than I was hoping for for this specific call. We've, we've already been going on for an hour on this um, on this video, so I don't want to take too much more time going through this. Um, let me just see if I can check something over here. I'm just going to see if I can load up a quick template to see if that actually works. Okay, so shadow trading strategy.
so I do also have the I do also have some templates in in this OneDrive in, in this Google Drive folder so that can actually be um, found so if we go in there one of these will be this one over here so if I download this and then I go show in folder and I go cut and I go to my documents folder so whenever you're loading up templates on your computer go to your documents folder and then go to your ninja trader 8 and go to templates strategy and it's going to be your shadow trading strategy and then you can paste it in there so theoretically we should have that one in there okay so it is in there at the moment I might just load that one I know it's, it'll take a bit longer a bit quicker to to cycle through that one so you just gotta did disable this um, let me just see where are we come on oh, I gotta click on abort So it's just gone 3.17 a.m. where I am, so I'm, I'm, I'm a, a bit past my bare time. Okay, so template load. Um, so that's going to show you. Oh, and I also had one to seven arrows. So that's also um, something that I increase. So you can now go up to 14 arrows. So that'll give you a much better um, result to, to look through that. Okay, so loading a template is not really helping me. Um, you guys can definitely go do that on your own. You can go download those templates and just even create your own. Just do your own optimizations and look at different values that you can basically work with. The shadow trading strategy is a pretty cool one. Um, the other strategies that you can that you can optimize we discussed already are your analytical strategies. So definitely go have a look at those and um, I look forward to getting your feedback on that um, the shadow trading is really exciting so definitely have a very good play with that um, you're gonna find that it's it's really gonna be awesome to work with and quite easy to understand especially when you've only got a few settings to actually optimize okay thanks guys and um, I'll leave it at that and I'm gonna be adding more specific videos on each of the strategies I just thought I would launch this one just to get you guys going and um, you know just get you guys going with the strategy to start playing around and, and working some things out on it don't forget to to go and try the um, or go and use the time slots for your optimizations as well even though you can't use the daily target for an optimization you can certainly have it active on a trading chart to be able to respect that just like with the other strategies that we have so go from there and um, we'll chat soon thank you